Now in these questions, we need to compare decimals which have a different number of decimal places. So first, we have 0 0.2 and 0 0.33. The way to compare decimals is to write out both numbers with the decimal points lined up, and then to write 0 in empty squares. And we can do that because 0 0.20 is the same as 0 0.2. All this zero tells us is that we don't have any hundredths. So now it's easier to compare. We start by comparing the larger place values. So here, both numbers have a zero in the ones, but if we go along to the tenths, we have two tenths and three tenths. So we know straight away that this number with three tenths, 0 0.33, is the larger decimal. And we didn't even need to look at the hundredths place value. As soon as we saw that the tenths was larger in this number, we knew which was the larger decimal. Now we have 0 0.9 and 0 0.99. So again, we write out both numbers with the decimal points lined up, write 0 in empty squares, and now we compare the larger place values first. So both numbers have 0 ones and 9 tenths. But 0 0.9 has 0 hundredths and 0 0.99 has 9. So 0 0.99 is the larger decimal. Now we have 0 0.5 and 0 0.45. Again, we write the numbers out with the decimal points lined up and we need to write a 0 in this empty square. Now both numbers have 0 ones, but if we look to the tenths, we have 5 and 4, so we know straight away that the number with 5 tenths must be larger, so that's 0 0.5. And it's easy to get confused on this question, because with 0 0.45, we have two digits after the decimal point. But remember, the first digit always tells us how many tenths we have, and tenths are 10 times larger than hundredths. So it doesn't matter that this number has five hundredths because 0 0.5 has an extra tenth. Now 0 0.55 and 0 0.7. We write the numbers out with the decimal points lined up and write zero in empty squares. Both numbers have zero ones, but if we look to the tenths, we have five and seven. So we know straight away that this second number with 7 tenths is our larger number. So let's think back to this first question. We had 0 0.2 and we know that the first digit after the decimal point is the tenths digit. So we can show 2 tenths. Then we had 0 0.33. So that's 3 tenths and 3 hundredths which we can show on our fraction bar. And we can see clearly that 0 0.33 is the larger decimal because a larger amount of the fraction bar is shaded. We could also show place value counters. So with 0 0.2, we have 2 tenths. And with 0 0.33, we have 3 tenths and 3 hundredths. Next, we had 0 0.9, so that's 9 tenths, and 0 0.99. So that's 9 tenths and 9 hundredths. We can see that 0 0.99 is larger. And if we show place value counters, we have 9 tenths with 0 0.9, but 9 tenths and 9 hundredths with 0 0.99. Next, we had 0 0.5 and 0 0.45. So with 0 0.5, we have 5 tenths. But with 0 0.45, we only have 4 tenths, and although we have 5 hundredths, because hundredths are so much smaller than tenths, 0 0.5 is our larger decimal. Showing place value counters, we have 5 tenths, and with 0 0.45, we have 4 tenths and 5 hundredths. So although we've got more counters, we need to remember that we need 10 hundredths to have the same value as 1 tenth. So the extra tenth in 0 0.5 means that it's the larger decimal. 
Then 0 0.55, so 5 tenths and 5 hundredths. And 0 0.7, so 7 tenths. We can see that 0 0.7 is larger. With place value counters, for 0 0.55, we can show 5 tenths and 5 hundredths. And with 0 0.7, we can show 7 tenths. So, for this first number, because we only have 5 tenths, it doesn't matter how many hundredths we have. 0 0.7 is our larger decimal. Now, we have 7.65 and 7.69. If we write the numbers out, one below the other, with the decimal points lined up, we can see that both have seven ones, both have six tenths, but then when we look at the hundredths, we can see that this number with the nine hundredths must be larger. So that's 7.69. Next, we have 4.71 and 4.69. Both numbers have four ones, but if we look at the tenths, we can see that the number with 7 tenths, so 4.71, must be larger. And it doesn't matter that the second number has more hundredths, because tenths are larger than hundredths. Now, we have 6.01 and 5.99. So, remember, we start by comparing the larger place values. So here, that's comparing the ones. In the first number, we have six ones, and in the second, we only have five. So we know straight away that this first number, 6.01, must be larger. It doesn't matter that with 5.99, we have more tenths and more hundredths, because tenths and hundredths are smaller than ones. Now, we have 5.45 and 5.5. .5. So we write out both numbers with the decimal points lined up. But here, we need to remember to write zero in our empty square. Now, both numbers have five ones, but the first number only has four tenths, and the second number has five tenths. So, 5.5 is our larger decimal. We can show what we were comparing with place value counters. So, 7.65 is smaller than 7.69 because 7.65 only has 5 hundredths and 7.69 has 9 hundredths. 4.71 is larger than 4.69 because both numbers have 4 ones, but because the first number has 7 tenths, that's larger than any number with only 6 tenths. It doesn't matter that here we have nine hundredths and here we only have one, because remember, we need ten hundredths to make something with the same value as just one tenth. Then we had 6.01 and 5.99. 6.01 is larger because ones are larger than tenths, so it doesn't matter that we've got nine tenths and nine hundredths because even 9 tenths and 9 hundredths taken together have less value than one whole. So, because this number has more ones, we know straight away that it's our larger number. Finally, we had 5.45 and 5.5. 5.5 is larger, because although the first number has 5 hundredths, hundredths are smaller than tenths. We need 10 hundredths to make something with the same value as one tenth. So, because the second number has an extra tenth, we know that 5.5 is the larger number.